Hi, everybody. It's Maya Zahira with Psychic Protection Sanctuary. And we are now live in Zoom for what used to be our monthly Facebook Live in our free Facebook group. But instead of doing Facebook Live uh, the last month or so, we've switched over to Zoom. So um, we're here in Zoom. Uh, just a few logistics before we get started into our very important topic of toxic and dangerous spiritual events, what to watch out for and how to keep yourself safe, toxic and dangerous spiritual events. So I'm going to go over a few logistics and then we're going to get into things. So this live class on Zoom is only for people who are members in our free Facebook group. So this is not just like anybody in the world can join. It's like you have to come through the filter of joining the free Facebook group. For those of you who are watching the replay on YouTube or wherever, that Facebook group is called Psychic Protection Sanctuary Facebook group, not, not the page, but the group, Psychic Protection Sanctuary. Um, for those of you who are here live, it's great to see you. Feel free to use the chat option at any time. And then the cool thing about Zoom is that there will also be a few opportunities for you to get on camera uh, and use your voice and share if you want to. It's totally optional. So uh, for those of you who are here live, go ahead and say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're joining from. And I wanna wish a happy Independence Day to those of you in the United States. And I would just say, no matter where you are living in the world, may you experience freedom on all levels and especially freedom from any type of psychic or spiritual, negative spiritual interference. May we all, experience freedom today and always. A couple of quick announcements. Uh, this is really exciting. So um, I've been talking about my two books that I've had out for a while. First book was published a few years ago. Um, second book was published at the beginning of this year. Um, Darkness Disguised as Light and the Psychic Attack Source book, the two books. Well, they are both almost finished in production for audiobooks. So they will be on Audible and uh, amp, um, audio version Audible on amazon.com and everything. So um, not yet, but it's very close. So by the end of this month, July, 2023, those should be up there. I will send an email. <coughs> Got a little scratchy throat tonight. Sorry, guys. I will send out an email to everybody who's on my email list. So if you're not on my email list yet and you want to get on it, because it's your choice. Some people don't like emails. Um, if you want to get on my email list, here's how you do it. It's really easy. Just go to my website, www.psychicprotectionsanctuary.com psychicprotectionsanctuary.com and then you'll see there's like a little um, space where you can enter your email address. Uh, you'll get some free gifts right away and then I will also I send out a weekly email and I'll send out an email when the audiobooks are available if you want to um, stay up to date on that. Let me think, any other questions, any other announcements? Uh, the final announcement, just reminder, is that if you would like to work with me more deeply, you can do so in uh, a couple different places, but the main place is my online academy, Spiritual Empowerment Academy. And uh, the enrollment for that is actually closing soon. So um, if you want more information on that, go to my website, psychicprotectionsanctuary.com. And under the events tab, you'll find it. Um, and um, I think that's it for announcements. So 30 plus years ago, I was a school teacher. So I have a real nerdy side and I love it when you guys take notes 
you don't have to take notes. You can be totally visually present and just watching and listening. Or I know some of you have to multitask and take care of kids and stuff. That's okay too. But I think this, just like a lot of our classes, I think this particular topic, it would be great for you to jot things down just to kind of really get it into your mental file. Um, actually writing things down with a pen or a pencil on paper actually puts it into your brain in a different way. Um, there's some science to that. I don't remember where the studies are, but um, I think this is a topic that you would definitely wanna do this with. Oh, uh, speaking of nerd brains, <clears throat> um, I forgot to also mention that yesterday on the full moon, I did officially start writing my third book, which is all about um, abusive and predatory spiritual teachers, healers, and light workers. I'm not going to share what the title of the book is yet, but... Um, this topic today that, that we're going to talk about really ties in with this topic today. We're not talking really as much about, in, um, individual predators. We're discussing more. We're talking more about, um, spiritual events, gatherings that are dangerous. And we're going to pull that apart. And you might already be very aware of this issue or you may not have thought about it and you're like, whoa, this is new to me. Uh, because here's the thing is most spiritual seekers, at least in the beginning, make the assumption, uh, and this is pretty standard, most people make the assumption that spiritual events are actually a safe space. Most people assume in the beginning until they've had a negative experience and they realize otherwise and they go, oh, I thought this was a safe space and clearly it's not. Um, and so then they have a rude awakening. Um, but most people at, in the beginning, before they know better, assume that it's actually a safer space than other environments. And I would say that the opposite is true, that most spiritual events are actually more dangerous than just your other basic kinds of events, going bowling, going out with friends, going like, and like whatever other events you can think of. Now, when I'm speaking of spiritual events, I'm referring to things like psychic fairs, holistic fairs, retreats, whether it's a day retreat or a weekend retreat or a week long retreat, um, Reiki circles, healing circles, sound healing concerts. What other kinds of, of events have I left out? Use the chat option. Any other kind of events that you can think of? Now, next, I'm going to talk about the um, six main reasons why these events are dangerous, okay? And then we'll brainstorm anything that I haven't included that maybe you are thinking uh, we can have you add to that list as well. And then at the end, I'm going to give some tips on how to keep yourself safe. Yeah. So some of these reasons why these events are dangerous, you may have already realized, and some of these ideas might be new. So going over this is going to help you build your discernment. Um, because I'm not in any way saying you should never go to any spiritual events. If you're a spiritual seeker, it's only natural to want to have connection and enrichment and uh, to be able to meet with other people, to go to classes, to learn new things and et cetera. Um, that's healthy to, to want to do that. Um, but some of this information is going to help you to discern. Okay, so let's go over comments here. All right, so some of you were saying you had trouble with Zoom. It looks like it's okay now though. I'm glad you got here. So for those of you who are watching the replay, 
on YouTube. I forgot to give a shout out to all of you. I really appreciate all of the wonderful YouTube subscribers. I do want to uh, give a clarification because it seems like there are different expectations on YouTube <laughs> than, than other places. And this is a live class on Zoom where we are interacting and um, it's not like an edited YouTube video. So get over that, <laughs> okay? Um, and so what I do is I do these free classes and then uh, really as a way of paying it forward to the community, I upload it to YouTube so that more people can have access to it. So I hope you enjoy it. And um, so just keep in mind, this is a different format. So thank you for being patient. And trolls, you can go on being cute and adorable. Um, Rose is saying hi from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Jamie is here from Chandler, Arizona. I live about two hours north of Maya. Yeah. And I live in Southern Arizona, Southeast Arizona, where it's, where it's very hot. Uh, Laura says, there are so many spiritual events happening where I am all the time. I have been avoiding all of it. Yeah, so follow your comfort level. For some of you, uh, some of you might want to avoid all spiritual events and there's nothing wrong with that. Especially if, for those of you who are dealing with any kind of negative spiritual activity, interference, um, spiritual warfare kind of stuff, um, spiritual events can be really dangerous because they're a hotbed for entity activity. So if you're looking to keep yourself extra safe, I actually recommend that you stay, that you take a break from those kinds of events. <laughs> however, excuse me. However, if you're feeling pretty grounded and pretty okay, um, then uh, you can attend events, but I would be discerning with which ones you choose. Laura says, right now there's a festival coming this weekend in, okay, gotta use my glasses, Uvita, Costa Rica. It's all about detoxification on all levels. I can smell the wrongness of it. Okay, so you're saying your intuition is telling you there's something wrong about it and you don't know exactly what it is, but um, it's not feeling right. So definitely trust your spidey sense, yeah? Um, <laughs> I try not to have my glasses on the whole time, but I can't read. So, um, your name, is it Legita or is it pronounced a different way? Let me know. Okay. Cause I want to pronounce your name correctly. She says best wishes and blessings to all from Lithuania. That's amazing. So cool. Uh, lately. It's been really fun because we've had a lot more. Um, I've I've had international students for quite a while, but it seems like we're getting more more international students in the last couple of months. So um, you know, more people in uh, the UK, Australia, South Africa, China, um, Denmark. I know I'm forgetting some places, uh, but. I think that's extra exciting because we're all united all over the world. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned before, many of us assume that these will be safe spaces, but they are actually some of the most dangerous. And I wrote down in my notes, ignorance is bliss <laughs> because it's kind of like, and I've, I have had this experience and a lot of people that I've helped with spiritual warfare issues have, have made this um, observation as well, that it's like back before our eyes were opened, before we, we went to an event and got attacked or something attached to us or some weird thing happened, before that happened, we used to go to lots of spiritual events and it was so great. And we thought it was really uplifting and transformative and blissful and everything. And then our eyes were opened 
But back then we were kind of ignorant. We just didn't know what we didn't know. So it was great. It was great. But I don't know about you, but I would rather know. I don't want to have my head in the sand and not not know what's going on out there. So yes, ignorance is bliss, but um, that bliss is actually a sign that stuff is hooking into you. And you definitely don't want that. So I have a list here of some of the reasons why spiritual events a lot of spiritual events are dangerous. So this is actually not the exception. I've actually found that the majority of events fit into any of these categories. And so what I find is rare are events that are safe where, and I would like to see more of these kinds of events where the events are safe, where they are run by facilitators who are grounded, not on drugs, <laughs> that's a no brainer, like who are sober, who have, are actively working through their own emotional um, and mental hangups. So they're not projecting those onto their uh, participants. Um, I would like to see more events where the facilitators have enough abilities to see, feel, or discern whether the space is clear and safe or whether there are entities or negative energies and to have the knowledge to clear those issues um, and to know how to hold space and manage the energies. Let's say it's a retreat that's all about personal and spiritual transformation. You have all these different people's energies. It takes a special kind of facilitator or facilitators to be able to manage all the energies to help people to stay grounded and to not be like energetically vomiting on each other, uh, their own stuff, which is a thing that happens when you go to these transformation retreats and it gets very messy and then you go home with someone else's entity attachments or their, or their trauma energies or whatever, because the facilitators don't understand how, how to clear people, how to keep everybody clear. Um, so here are some of the reasons why some of these events are dangerous. And I am gonna be staring at my notes during this part because I have a lot written here. Number one, the facilitators often don't have the A, knowledge, B, ability, or C, desire to uphold a safe space. So some of them don't know how, so they don't have the knowledge, like no one has ever taught them or explained it to them. Um, the second part is ability, they, they don't have the knowledge or that they don't know how to properly clear a space or to ground energy. Um, and some of them don't even have the desire, like they don't care. They lit this sounds crazy, but I have um, been, been a part of events where the facilitators literally did not care. All they cared about was like pocketing, like putting money in their pocket. Um, I have a couple of examples. Uh, recent event that I was a part of uh, in the last couple of months, the person in charge of the event, God bless her, she insisted that it is not her responsibility to maintain a safe space for the event. And this person would, walk, would frequently walk into events with total chaos energy, personal chaos, like personal chaos energy and yelling at the other facilitators and just like drama, chaos. And then she would tell the participants that it was their responsibility <clears throat> for whatever kind of energy was in the room. It's not her responsibility. Now, when I explained that, 
Doesn't that sound ridiculous? Who, who in their right mind would think that? But I've run into many event coordinator, event facilitators who have that belief. And I, I don't understand why they have that, that belief. Um, I know for myself, as a person who's really conscientious and a person who uh, believes in integrity, I feel responsible. Like I know that if I put on an event, I will choose a space that has good energy, that isn't a hotbed for like demon portals or something. Like I'm going to choose a place that's safe. I'm, I'm giving, that's a real example. Like I won't get into that story right now, but um, I'm going to choose a space that's safe to begin with. And then I'm going to take the time to cleanse that space and to do prayers and blessings before anyone even walks in the door. And I'm going to be doing that ahead of time. And that is what a responsible event coordinator would do. Now, can problems still arise? Absolutely. When you have all sorts of different people coming into the, to an event, stuff happens. But when your foundational energy is really clean and clear, it's going to be a lot better. So one of the examples is that recent coordinator who insisted that it's not her responsibility. It's actually the responsibility of the people who walk in the door. Wrong. I strongly disagree. Um, I worked with somebody, I don't know, maybe a year ago um, who um, had been working with, in my opinion, a really toxic spiritual teacher and uh, who was taking the students through various psychic exercises, teaching them how to become more psychic and taking them into really dangerous territory and not teaching them how to be safe. And she, this teacher literally told the students regularly, quote, it's not my job to keep you safe. It's not my job to keep you safe. Like the person was teaching them, was taking them into these you know, exercises and saying, it's not my job to keep you safe. Like that's totally irresponsible. Um, so to wrap up key point number one, that facilitators often don't have the A, knowledge, B, ability, or C, desire to uphold a safe space. I will wrap up that uh, point by saying that you often have more knowledge about psychic protection than the facilitator does and that is the truth even though like you might be new to this content you might be new to my youtube channel or my or the facebook group or whatever you still probably have more understanding and more knowledge about psychic protection than a lot of the facilitators do because a lot of them and i'm not trying to throw people under the bus i actually believe in supporting all my colleagues and all facilitators out there, but a lot of them just want to put their head in the sand and they don't even want to think about this stuff. And it's, it's lazy and it's irresponsible. And so since you have probably more knowledge about psychic protection than they do, it's going to be up to you to keep yourself safe. And that's why we're having this class today. So you can learn about all this and, um, make the decisions that are right for you. So before we go on to point number two, hi, Salive, it's good to see you. I'm gonna read some of your comments. Um, Laura says, there's other types, okay, great. I wanted to hear this. There's other types of community gatherings too. Um, and I don't know how to say this word. I have to put my glasses on. At Anarchapulco, <laughs> I'm so sorry is an example. I have a friend who came away from this multi-day event completely traumatized for several years and she's been under attack ever since. Yeah, I'm really sorry to hear that. Uh, there, another example that I didn't share is, um, you know, there are a variety of shamanic ceremonies and a lot of people assume if it's shamanic, then it's safe. Um, but that's 
and no disrespect to any sh shamanic practices and earth-based practices and indigenous practices. But um, the fact is that a lot of the traditional um, shamanic practices, the, the traditional indigenous practices have been taken over, have been, you know, colonized basically by Western culture and new agers who are trying to make profit. And I don't want to demonize everyone who, you know, really truly genuinely has a deep love and reverence for these um, practices. But what I'm getting at is, um, you know, I think that there's a lot that's lost in translation with some of these, the shamanic uh, rituals um, and traditions and classes and et cetera. But there's something lost in translation where, you know, um, some of the original shamans, I feel, uh, you know, some of the, by original, I mean, actually indigenous shamans who know these practices firsthand from their culture, uh, probably know how to hold sacred safe space a lot more, a lot better than somebody who learned from somebody who learned from somebody from a new age circle. Okay. Um, but that said, no matter what culture or what tradition someone is, you still need to use your discernment because there, the truth is there are dark practices and unethical practices everywhere. So even if someone is, tr is truly an indigenous practitioner, still don't make assumptions that they're going to keep you safe. You are always the one who has to keep yourself safe. Okay, but that's my little rant about, um, you know, indigenous ceremonies, ayahuasca ceremonies and all of that, that's been very colonized by Western and white um, new age culture. Um, and it's, I've worked with numerous clients over the years who've been very damaged by some of these rituals. Um, so does that mean that everyone is damaged by these rituals? No, uh, there are people who have amazing experiences, but I've actually encountered way more people who've been harmed. So use caution. Um, Laura says, yep, that corrupted shamanic thing is big in Costa Rica. Oh, that's yucky. But there, but she says, but there are still a few good ones. Yeah, there are always some good ones. And so let's say there is something that you really feel drawn to take part in. You're going to use your discernment in uh, where you're going to attend that event or ceremony and who you're going to work with. And not only using your intuition, but do some research. I go online, find out if there's, you know, honestly, you can go online and uh, sometimes there are complaints about facilitators that are predators, that are sexual predators or that touch their, their uh, uh, followers inappropriately, sexual contact and things like that. If you find anything like that about them online, that's your immediate answer. Like you should not go to that, in my opinion. Okay, number two on the list, as we are discussing today's topic of toxic and dangerous spiritual events, what to watch out for and how to keep yourself safe. Okay, number two reason why many of these spiritual events are actually dangerous. Number two reason why this is the case is because of the common belief in popular spirituality, the common belief that dark entities don't exist. There's a very common belief in, especially in the new age, but in some other areas of popular alternative spirituality that negative entities don't exist. And this denial means 
that they are never identifying or clearing any negative spiritual issues. An example of this was that uh, the event that I mentioned uh, where the facilitator said it's not her responsibility to uh, keep participants safe. Um, this event happened a couple of months ago. And when I walked into the event and I'm, I'm really tuned into the channel of dark forces, unfortunately, unfortunately, like it's really not any fun, but it's very helpful for sure. I walked into this event and I could see a huge portal up in the ceiling, a huge portal and all these demons flying um, in a circle, like these uh, kind of like gargoyle flying monkey style demons, because there's different types of demons. They were all flying in a circle above the center of the event. And guess where my booth was located? Right smack underneath all of that. <laughs> I was in the center and uh, I mentioned something to a couple of my colleagues who were also in the center. And I said, uh, hey, you know, I don't want to alarm you, but I'm really tuned into this stuff. And there are a bunch of demons like up there. And I described it. First person, uh, the, the first person that I mentioned this to is a lovely lady. I really like her a lot. And she, like pretty much everyone else at that event, has this common new age belief that dark entities don't exist. Because literally the second that I said what I was seeing, she corrected me and said, mm -mm, dark entities don't exist. That's that. That doesn't exist. That isn't real. Um, you must be picking on up on something that's lower vibration. That's all. It's just some lower vibrations. And I said, okay, you know, because I'm not going to force anyone to see what I'm seeing. But this is such a common belief among people who are putting on and participating in spiritual events. This belief that dark dark entities don't exist. And so if you think that something doesn't exist, you're not even going to look for it. You're not going to see it. And you're certainly not going to set boundaries or clear it. And imagine that the person putting on that event, which was a hotbed for like literally demons flying through the room. Uh, that person was also in denial that anything needed to be done about the energy. So naturally, uh, a, there was a lot of chaos and there was, because that's what demons create. And um, there were some people who were attacked, but I was not, I was um, not in charge of the event. So I couldn't, um, you know, I did, I didn't have um, authority over that. So imagine if you were, um, you know, going to a psychic fair or an event of some kind and you think oh this is going to be a beautiful energy and you walk in the door and you know it's filled with demons like not good so in that example the facilitators really didn't even have a desire to understand what was happening they didn't care um and they also believed like they they didn't want to believe that that sort of thing thing exists because Ignorance is bliss. A lot of people would rather just believe in angels, but not the other side. Um, and I love angels, by the way, but the other stuff does exist too. So in just a second, we're going to go on to the third reason why a lot of spiritual events are dangerous, but I'm going to read this comment. Um, Ligita says, it is like spiritual hygiene. It has to be everywhere where there is human interaction, right? So it's like you wouldn't put on a, um, you wouldn't host like a dinner, a really nice dinner in a hotel ballroom. Like, oh, I'm going to host this, this, um, you know, wonderful, delicious fine dining experience for like this wedding let's say that this wedding reception but 
Um, all the tables are going to be filthy and the food hasn't been washed properly and it's been sitting out all day and you're going to get food poisoning and like who would do that <laughs> right it's like normal hygiene you just wouldn't do it but um maybe if i rant enough about it <laughs> like spiritual facilitators will start doing something about it um i'm i'm joking about that because um really when i speak up to people in charge, I get thrown under the bus because they don't want to hear it. So I get kicked out of the event or the whatever, you know, or or um, I'm not invited back or whatever, uh, even if I speak about it very respectfully. Um, so the whoever I'm trying to explain it to doesn't want to hear it. So the reason why I'm sharing this information is for your benefit as a person who, uh, as people who are going to be um, attending spiritual events. And also if you're, you're here watching this and you are a facilitator of events, then you're probably really genuinely wanting to know how to keep your people safe. Because there really are facilitators who really do care, <laughs> but they're right now, they're, they're pretty rare. So if that's one of you, that's awesome. I'm so glad. Uh, Laura says, I was just about to ask if it makes sense to avoid letting someone take hold of your hand or casually touch you. Then I thought of how smart the Japanese are that they bow to say hello and goodbye. No handshakes. Um, you know, with COVID culture, um, I like to wave at people. <laughs> I go, hey, how's it going? Uh, so you don't have a requirement to touch anyone or to let them touch you. But sometimes if you're in a crowded event, it just happens. So um, you, you probably should cleanse yourself spiritually after attending an event. Okay, so keep those comments coming in. Okay, reason number three for why many spiritual events are dangerous. Reason number three is because there are a variety of spiritual workers working at a lot of these events, a whole range of different spiritual workers. Some of them are high integrity and good and working with angels and working with uh, whatever positive energies, genuinely positive energies they are working with. But there's, but there are other practitioners who are um, intentionally working with the dark. So using psychic fairs as an example, I've been participating in psychic fairs for many years, maybe close to 20 years. And what I've noticed uh, among all of my psychic colleagues is that there will be a big range of people from having like soft, lovely energy readers and healers and practitioners to those that are doing black magic and who are working with, with their purposely working with really dark energies because in their mind and their belief system, they think that's okay. Now they have free wills and, and I'm not the energy police. I'm not gonna go bunk them over the head and say, you shouldn't be doing that. But, but we need to recognize that at psychic fairs or other gatherings where there are a lot of practitioners, we don't wanna assume that all practitioners are genuinely of love and light. There are also a lot of practitioners that are um, uh, that the psychics and practitioners, healers, et cetera. There's a lot of human beings in that mix that um, get jealous, competitive, do black magic and send curse energy to the other psychics across the room who are busier. I mean, it's freaking ridiculous. Um, so it's kind of a weird... Um, What's the phrase I want to use? It's like, um, I've lost it. It's like, it's like a job hazard. 
<laughs> like if you are a spiritual worker and you go to an event, it's like you have to go in with your hazmat suit on because uh, there are those who are working from a really low energy, a low vibration of competitiveness and jealousy and they're like a lack mentality. And then there are those who are high integrity. Um, and then at, uh, with there being a variety of spiritual workers, uh, yes, there are some that are intentionally working with dark forces. And there are also many of the spiritual workers who don't realize that they are working with false light entities, that they are channeling messages, channeling um, psychic messages from entities that they think are ascended beings, but that are actually dark beings that are tricksters. And there's a lot of that. And I already know that my next book after the next book is going to be all about false light entities, because that is uh, probably it's it's perhaps the number one top problem um, in the, the spiritual communities and spiritual world world is that um, the spiritual communities are literally infiltrated with false light entities and all these people who think that they're channeling um, Saint Germain or the Council, Galactic Council of Light or whatever they're, they're channeling. And it's actually a jinn or some other false light entity. And so you walk through this event and you, know, you sit down and have a psychic reading with someone who seems lovely, but who doesn't have good discernment, unfortunately. Uh, but even people who have good discernment get fooled by these tricksters because they're very tricky. And then, you know, sometimes people go home with either a dark entity or a false light entity attached to them. Um, I mentioned that I've been doing psych psychic fairs for a really long time. And about 10 years ago, I was uh, sitting, I was working at a psychic fair and a lady came over to me and she said, oh my gosh, can you help me? Cause I, I can't, it was a fair that happened once a year. And she said, I came to last year's fair. And when I went home, my husband who doesn't even believe in this stuff, he looked at me and he said, I think something, I think something came home with you because you're, you don't look right. And your voice is different. Your eyes are different. And um, she had a whole year where she dealt with this thing that attached to her at the psychic fair. Okay. So yeah. And so this is pretty common. Okay. So our topic today, toxic and dangerous spiritual events, what to watch out for and how to keep yourself safe. So some of this stuff might sound, might sound really freaky. I know that some people end up taking a break from spiritual events for a while. Um, and that can be a smart thing to do. Because actually, there's a lot of, um, do I even have this on my list? I'm going to add this extra thing. So this is like extra inserted after number three. Toxic, um, like toxic spirituality culture like a lot of the spiritual events right now are really dysfunctional and unhealthy anyway aside from entity issues and other unethical stuff just a lot of the teachings are um, teaching people how to like disembody leave your body and go out into the 5d and not even be anchored into your body um there's all sorts there's there's a book called um spiritual bypassing by what's his first name masters somebody masters um definitely look up that book it's a great primer on like the basics of why today's spiritual culture is just it's really dysfunctional and unhealthy a lot of the the teachings so like a lot of people take a break from a lot of the spiritual events because they're, they're just really ungrounded. Um, okay, so officially number four on our list of uh, reasons why some of these events are so dangerous. 
So number four is, is really quick and easy here. When we're talking about psychic fairs, now we're talking about all sorts of events like retreats, ceremonies, uh, all the things. But number four is specifically about psychic fairs or events where there are um, psychic readers and mediums. And I'm a psychic reader and a medium, so I'm not putting that down. But the fact is that at a psychic fair, when people are showing up to have readings and they want to connect with their loved one, which can be a beautiful thing. I love doing those readings, by the way. But the fact is that those spirits of the loved ones literally show up and wait in line to be able to contact through the medium, through the psychic, to talk with their, their loved one who's sitting down receiving a reading. That's not really necessarily a bad thing, but if you are sensitive and you go to a psychic fair and you're walking through a mix of entities, you're walking through a mix of not necessarily negative entities or demons, but these are spirits that have shown up for, to be able to try to communicate with their loved one during a psychic reading. So um, I literally, years ago, I was at a psychic fair, not doing readings, but I sat down to have a reading. And at that event, all of the readers were in the center of this ballroom. And then all of the vendors were in the outside, like along the outside wall. And there was like a curtain, like sectioning off the center area where all the readers were. So you'd walk through the center and the energy was so intense because there were so many spirits in there. So I walk in, I think I got a free reading because I got like a free ticket or something. I sat down and I kid you not. Now, I, I don't know how to describe this. So I sat down and I literally felt a spirit walk through me. And I, I kind of freaked out and I said, oh my God, because <laughs> this was years ago. Like now I probably wouldn't have freaked out in such a visible way, but it literally felt like this, it wasn't like an electrocution electricity, but it was like mild electricity, like that, that tingly feeling, but it was really strong too. And I literally felt it move through me. It was the weirdest thing ever. Um, so at psychic fairs and similar events, there are a lot, a lot of spirits. It's not an energetically, um, clean space. Some people, including some of my students, are very um, like sticky. Um, entities tend to, like spirits, tend to like them and want to go home with them. And that's true for some people. So, you know, like a psychic fair might, might not be a great event for somebody like that. Number five, reason why some events are dangerous specifically relates to sound healing concerts. Sound healing concerts are like, um, it's like a gathering of people. A lot of times it will happen at a yoga studio, but it can happen anywhere. And uh, there is one or more um, facilitators who are either playing instruments, gongs, uh, crystal bowls or other instruments as a way to uplift the environment, to raise the vibration. And in theory, this is a beautiful thing. I used to attend a lot of crystal healing, crystal bowl healing concerts. Um, and it's very uplifting. Like you can just feel your energy open up. But once uh, my eyes were opened and I saw some of the problems, what I started to see was that during the sound healing concerts, everybody's energy just opens up. It's like everybody is totally expanded. And at those events, I saw the most um, shocking things where I would see portals open and entities pour in and attach to all the participants. 
So this belief that high vibration, if you're at a high vibration, then lower entities can't exist there. That is not true based on what I've seen a bunch of times. There are lots of entities that, that are very attracted to the high vibrations. It's like this opposites attract kind of energy thing that happens and they, they wanna feed on that. They wanna feed on that energy. So um, does, that, does that mean you can never go to a sound healing concert? I'm not saying that, um, but I, would, I wouldn't just go to just any sound healing concert. I would wanna know, um, you know do, does that uh, person know how to keep safe space? And even then, um, you've got all the participants in the mix and who knows what they're calling in. So on the rare occasions that I've still gone to some sound healing concerts, I do kind of maybe a thing that people think is bizarre, but when I show up, I um, sit in the back row with my back against the wall and I'm by the door. So if I decide I wanna leave, so my back, is not exposed and I can be very aware of what's happening with my energy in front of me and I can enjoy the beautiful concert. It's, but I, it's, it's literally been years. It's been a few years since I've been to a concert. Um, okay, so, uh, and you're free to post any other comments here. I'm gonna go into our last reason why, um, some of these events are super dangerous. And this is because of interpersonal dysfunction. So toxic people who have toxic ways of relating. So the event facilitator or the workers at the event have an unhealthy way of relating. So I think in this day and age, We've all heard of the, um, the, the spiritual events that are run by leaders who are narcissistic. We've heard about a lot of narcissistic spiritual leaders, uh, but there's a spectrum. Like there are um, events that, that are run, maybe not by an outright narcissist, but just people who aren't working on their stuff. And so they're skewing all of, like they're, they're just vomiting all their like unhealed wounds, all of their unresolved stuff and replaying all of that with all the people around them. And it is just a shit show and a mess. So uh, a lot of events being run by leaders acting out their unhealed wounds, narcissistic, histrionic, sociopathic, or predatory behaviors and abusive behaviors. So aside from like uh, um, poor hygiene regarding energy and entities, et cetera, just straight out abusive behaviors. And nowadays there's just a lot more information coming out in the news and in, um, in the media about abusive spiritual leaders and different things that they've engaged in. That's come up in the news uh, quite a lot. Um, so that's another reason why some of these events are really dangerous is because whoever's running it is really toxic. And um, it doesn't mean that all, and it, that all of them are evil. It just means like they really need, like somebody needs to make them go to therapy. And maybe I, in my humble opinion uh, and my very opinionated, but humble opinion, opinion, I think there are people who are running spiritual events who should not be running spiritual events because of the like chaos and drama. And there's so much unhealed wounds that they're the their whole like interactions of the whole group is just so dysfunctional they need to put like have someone else take over the event and they need to go to therapy um but that's not for me to choose right i can have an opinion about it but everyone has their free will out there um so here are a few examples of 
um, some of these categories that I just talked about. And some of these examples are real examples that I have observed or that I've been a part of. Um, so example A, facilitator of the event. Uh, their usual pattern is to yell at their workers when the workers try to speak up for their rights. The facilitator gaslights, emotionally manipulates, and seeks attention and support from people who will enable the abusive behaviors. That's really common. Example B, uh, event coordinator who is secretly a sexual predator, who is scoping out and trying to figure out who, uh, right, Laura, flying monkeys. That's, that's the term for uh, like all their supporters. So example B, coordinator who is secretly a sexual predator through their events, they are scoping out and trying to find their, their targets uh, so that they can say, you know, oh, you're, you're really struggling and that's why you came to this spiritual event so that you could find answers and support. I can help you with that. Why don't you come to my house and I'll help you with that? Yeah, and you can guess what they try to do after that. And that, that happens, that's very common. Like that's, that's probably a hundred stories that I've heard. Um, example C, retreat leader who unintentionally, but, but mm, without taking the care that was needed, they choose a retreat location that is actually haunted. And during the retreat, because the location is haunted, the participants are attacked all week long. And in addition, the retreat leader then has the participants help with clearing out the entities, which is not the participant's responsibility, by the way, okay? So the retreat uh, location should have been chosen with more care. It should have been thoroughly cleansed before anyone showed up. Example D, um, very well-meaning, but unaware sound healing musicians who open up a portal unintentionally. And at the end of the concert, participants go home with various entity attachments. An example, E, uh, psychic fair or spiritual event where um, some people end up going home with possession, with entity possession or entity attachments uh, because the space was energetically unsafe. So that those are just a few examples. Um, and I've seen all of it. I've seen all of it. And right now, like, I took that big sigh because I, I feel this like, ah, like frustration because I've been like getting on my soapbox about this for years, but I really do recognize that people who don't care about this aren't going to change. They're, they're not gonna. So this video is not for them because they don't care about this. Okay. Uh, but this video, this content is to help you all to um, understand some of these issues. And for some of you, this information is offering validation because you have had some weird experiences and maybe you're wondering, why is everyone like raving about how wonderful these events are? Because I've had these weird experiences. Am I the only one? And no, you're not the only one, okay? So do we have any questions or comments before we go into the final segment, which is a short segment? I'm gonna be giving some very brief tips. So questions. Um, the Gita says, aren't the sexually assaulting people possessed by sexual demons? Great question. So in my observation, 
yes. So when it comes to people who are sexual predators, they, one of the reasons why they are compelled to do that is because they have one or more sexual demons attached to them. Now, sometimes the person already had those um, imbalances within them, even when they were young, maybe it was passed on genetically, uh, that those dysfunctions, and then, so they already had those leanings. And then because of that, that's why the entities came in. Or the person didn't have those tendencies to begin with, but they ended up getting these entity attachments. The entities were, were sexual demons. And then the, the total cause of the, the person's um, sexual predatory actions is from those demons working through them. So it can be either they already had that pattern and then the entities come in also, or they, the person, the, pre, the, person who becomes a predator didn't have those patterns to begin with, but they developed those patterns because the entities caused them to. So it can be either way. And uh, yes, absolutely. And even when it comes to like the weird interpersonal dysfunctions and the, the um, spiritual teachers and leaders um, leading events, the, the, the leaders who are narcissistic histrionic, sociopathic, predatory behaviors, you better bet that there are entities in that mix having a heyday and loving it. Like they love to create chaos and um, stir things up, right? Okay, I saw a comment or two come in. So let's see here. Alora says, on the same note, are all cluster B personality disorders people possessed by demons? Um, okay, I have two things to say about this. First, and I know you all don't, you don't need to hear this, but just bear with me. Whenever I have a question that's, that's potentially medical in nature, I always respond with my disclaimer, which is I'm not a mental health specialist. So technically I really can't comment on like personality disorders, cluster B, et cetera. Um, but I can comment on the spiritual part, which is what you're asking anyway. Um, I think it's nuanced. I think when it comes to personality disorders, when it comes to uh, dysfunctions, and even when it comes to addic addiction behaviors, all, all of that, it fits into the same description of what I just described, where sometimes the person has the innate issue in the beginning, whether it's a it's a um, psychiatric disorder or a, a mental health imbalance or an addiction tendency uh, that's, that's uh, genetic, um, that's showing up in their system already from a young age, and then it develops over time. And then uh, their, their behaviors, the, the personality behaviors, the personality disorder behaviors are already going and then the entities come in and add to it. Or sometimes the behavior disorder wasn't there in the beginning, but there are entities that hook in for one reason or another. The, the child was in the wrong place at the wrong time, grew up in a haunted house, had like whatever reason that they ended up being exposed to some paranormal stuff younger in life, there was stuff that attached to them that then causes the, the um, mental health issues. So it can be either or, okay. That's in my observation as a spiritual worker. Okay. Um, and Laura says, or maybe a trauma that left a hole in their field that can be hooked into. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so great points and great questions, you guys. Thank you. Um, Actually, I'm gonna, um, yeah, I didn't open it up for sharing. Um, I haven't done that. So um, we have time for one person, optional. There's no pressure here. 
is there anybody who, uh, when I was sharing this list that was like, oh my God, I can totally relate to that. Or maybe you have something that I didn't include, or you've had a weird situation and you want to just share it. Um, is there anything that you'd like to share with the group? And uh, I'll give you an opportunity to raise your hand if you want to. Okay, it looks like everybody's quiet today. That's okay. Um, I'm going to give some tips right now. And if anyone changes their mind, uh, let me know and we'll, we'll have you share at the end. Okay. Um, so these tips are pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. And almost it seems too simple, but simple is sometimes the answer. Okay. Tip number one for keeping yourself safe regarding spiritual events. Tip number one Use your discernment when deciding if you're even going to go. And actually, those of you who have um, been targeted spiritually throughout your life, it's a good habit to use your discernment when deciding to go anywhere. Like, do I want to go to this birthday party? Do I want to go to this uh, like gathering? Do I want to go to this cookout? Do I want to go to this... Um, like music concerts, like, do I want to meet up with this new friend? Is this new friend okay for me? Like developing your discernment is a really good skill for everybody. It's going to help reduce the amount of drama in your life. But if you've been a targeted individual, it's just a good idea to just tune in and say, is this a match for me? Even if it's not like an entity infested event, is this, a, is this, is this what I really want to be doing? Is this, is this the right fit for me? Um, so you want to check in and discern if it's the right fit for you and if it's safe before you even go. And so you're going to choose wisely. Choose wisely. And then number two, let's say you do go to the event. You are allowed to leave if it doesn't feel right for you. Those of us who have big hearts, kind hearts, um, many of us have kind of a people pleaser tendency and we don't want to offend anyone and we don't want to look weird or rude. Like, well, maybe they'll think I'm being weird if I leave early or like, do I have to give a reason why I'm leaving? You don't have to give any, you don't owe an explanation to anyone. If, you, if it just doesn't feel right to you, you don't have to stay. And you don't even have to know the reason why it doesn't feel right. You can just say, you know what? I don't feel like being here anymore. And you can just leave. Uh, and you don't have to explain it to anyone. So you can leave if needed. Or instead of leaving, you might feel like you're guided to speak up and say something. It depends on what kind of event it is, especially if you are someone who is like co-facilitating. Let's say you are an energy healer or a spiritual worker, and maybe you're not like the head honcho in charge, but you are one of many who are helping put on an event. If there's something not right, use your discernment. Maybe you are supposed to speak up and say something like, hey, everybody, I think we need to clear the space. I think we need to do some blessing or like whatever you might speak up or you might check in and ask if it, you're supposed to speak up. And maybe it's like, you know what, this is not something you are supposed to speak up about. You're supposed to leave or you're supposed to just create your own safe bubble and let the drama play. out. <laughs> so every situation is going to be different. Sometimes speaking up or speaking out can cause you to be attacked. It depends on what the interpersonal and psychic and energetic environment is. Um, so you'll use your discernment. And then of course, when you come home from any event, even if it was a lovely event, every time you come home, you want to do some method to discharge your energy and to cleanse and ground. So by discharge, I mean releasing any energy that's not yours. And my favorite way to do this is to just sit outside with my feet on the ground 
and just allow any extra energy to just like, like a magnet, it just gets pulled off of you. But you can do a guided meditation. You can speak a prayer out loud. You can take a salt bath, which is an excellent way to cleanse, scrub a dub your aura. It'll make it all bright and shiny. And even if you came home with an entity uh, trying to hook into your field, a lot of times just a simple salt bath will pop that entity off because it hasn't had enough time to fully hook in. Um, so, so if you like salt baths, definitely do that. Um, and just whatever you feel that you need to do, like do some cleansing herbs, smoke cleansing, that sort of thing, whatever you want to do when you come home to, to just do a reset and to get back into your own energy. Cause you've been in a collective energy with people at an event. So get back into your own energy get grounded and anchored back into yourself, check in and notice if there's anything that, that doesn't belong. And the quicker that you address it, the, the um, easier it is to clear it. So it's a lot easier to clear it right away than in a week when it has hooked in more. So the more you can, the quicker you can address it, the better. Okay, so let me check the chat. Yeah, Laura says, allowed to leave, went to a TP ceremony many years ago. They tried so hard to get me to stay and then to come back. The pressure was intense. You bring up a really good point. I've actually been to spiritual events as well, where there was very intense pressure to not leave, not just from the facilitators, but from the other attendees it was like this culty kind of environment where like and and mental manipulation I was literally told at one event where I felt unsafe for a variety of reasons and I talk about it in my first book darkness disguised as light I call it the retreat from hell because it was so horrible um but the facilitators said things to us like if you leave early you're copping out on yourself and you will be driving home on that highway with your problems still with you, and it will be all your fault. Like she literally said that to us. I was like, oh my God. Like it was very manipulative. And there's a lot of that, a lot of that kind of manipulation to keep you from leaving. So it actually is helpful to develop a stubborn side. When it comes to psychic protection, it is a good idea to learn to be stubborn for your, on your own behalf, for your own welfare, your own protection. Because it doesn't help you or anyone if you let yourself be victimized or if you stick around for something that's not good. So... Uh, do we have any final comments before we go? I will start making a few announcements as we wait for any final comments here. Um, so this event is a monthly event, this free Zoom class. It's the first Tuesday of the month at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time zone. And you can adjust for whatever time zone you happen to be in. And right now we are doing this event in Zoom. It used to be Facebook Live. We're doing it in Zoom for now. And if I switch it back, I will be sure to let you know. The replay of this, of these classes gets posted onto my YouTube channel, which is Psychic Protection Sanctuary YouTube channel, um, just as a way of paying it forward to the universe, letting more people have access to this information so everybody can learn. Um, and I think that's it. Do we have any final comments? Uh, Rose says, thank you, Maya and everyone. Thanks, everybody. So um, I don't know what next month's topic will be. I'm always shown. I always just get the download and I, I get something that I want to get on my soapbox about and rant about, <laughs> which is good. Uh, those soapboxes are good. The rants are good. 
Uh, Laura says, thank you so much. And uh, Jamie says, great topic. Yeah. So um, as we post the replay later and, um, oh, hey, Sandy, you're fine. It's fine. It's fine to be late. Um, as we post the replay, if you have any other thoughts that you didn't share, you can share them in the, the comments, wherever you're watching the replay, like on the YouTube channel, um, because your stories and your comments actually help everybody. It literally helps everybody because, you know, my, my own brain doesn't think about everything and every nuance and you all being here and making your comments and asking questions helps uh, to bring up aspects that I might not have brought up on my own. So I truly appreciate all of your comments, uh, those of you who are here live, and then also those of you who, who comment later um, you know, on the replay. So thank you all for being here. Hope you all have a wonderful week. Blessings, blessings. And uh, the, more, the more you know, the more powerful you can be. And you are, I truly believe you are sovereign. You are the boss of your own energy at all times. Nobody has power over you except for you. And so the more you know about these kinds of things and these kind of shenanigans that go on behind the curtain, the more you can make your own empowered choices. So here's to empowerment. Until next time, everybody have a great month and see you, see you in the next class and see you online. Bye, everybody.